Shalom, shalom kulam. Today we are moving on with the mem. Uh, we've already discussed how the mem can be a um, preposition, the meaning from or out of, and how that relates to the uh, comparative, I am better than, or I am worse than. Um, and we've already discussed uh, one of the uses of the mem as a suffix for the masculine and plural, something that you're probably familiar with. Today we're going to go on and see how the mem can be a prefix that makes a noun. And in order to uh, sufficiently and accurately discuss this, we're going to have to see about uh, Hebrew verbs. Uh, Hebrew is a verb-oriented language, as you probably already know, and the verb system is very different and very complex to our English-speaking minds or any Western European language. So uh, let's get started and see what we can find out. Unlike English verbs in which there are about 15 different tenses, Hebrew just has three tenses. They are the perfect, the participle, and the imperfect. And some people don't even consider the participle to be a tense. But just so that we can have some understanding of it, the perfect is similar, but not exactly the same as our past tense. The perfect is for completed action. The participle is for current action. It's similar to our present. And the imperfect is similar to our future uh, action that may have started, but which is not complete and might be complete sometime in the future. We're going to concern ourselves today with the participle. In English, uh, we have some different forms of the present. Um, I run in, in the sense that I run every day. I am running in the sense that I run right now. I have been running means I started before, but I'm still doing it. All these are different present tenses in English. Uh, Hebrew just has one form for all those. And in addition to that fact, the participle can be considered to be a noun. It can be used as a noun equivalent uh, in this example to I am a runner. So we see that the participle form in Hebrew can be used as a noun. Now let's go on and see what this has to do with the uh, prefix mem. The concept of the development of Hebrew verbs is different than any other language except uh, Aramaic, I think. Um, Hebrew verb forms are based on what is called, in Hebrew, binyanim. This literally means buildings. Sometimes they're referred to as moods in Hebrew grammar. I refer to them as strengths. And there are seven of them, as you can see in this chart. We're going to talk about the difference between active and passive. Active, an active verb is when the subject of the sentence is completing the verb, I throw the ball. The passive is when the subject of the sentence receives the action, the ball was thrown by me. These are not so easy to see in English. We use our passives uh, even for adjectives sometimes, but they're very, very, very clear in Hebrew. So uh, the first three forms, which you see in the left-hand column, pa'al, pi'al, and he feel, they have corresponding passives, nifal, pu'al, and hofal. And then there is one verb form, which is the hitpa'el, which is considered to be reflexive. The idea, for example, of the difference between PAL and PL is in a matter of strength. The idea of learning and teaching are clearly related. And in English, you can't hear the relationship in the, in the language at all. But in Hebrew, you can. The root, lamad, lamad, mem, dalid, in the PAL means to learn. In the PL, it means to teach. Part of the reason that we're looking at this today concerning the mem is that the highlighted binyanim, pl, pu'al, hifil, hofal, and hitpa'el 
in the participle tense all begin with mem. The participle tense is not used that frequently in Tanakh, but we are going to look at some examples where we see it. Uh, comparing these first two examples, I hope uh, will explain uh, several of these principles to you. Yeshayahu nun he pasuk eser, Isaiah fifty five ten. Ki ka asher yered hageshem vehasheleg min hashemayim vshamalo yashuv ki im hirva et haaretz veholida vehitzmicha. Genesis 1, 12. In the Isaiah passage, we see that uh, he is talking about that the uh, the rain and snow fall to the ground, and and they're not um, they don't return void. And it's talking about God's word not returning void. But in the in the piece it says, and it gives seed to the sower. In other words, a person who's spreading the seed. So the first thing that we can see is that seed and sower both have the same root, zera. And the form zorea is a form which is a participle form. It's a pa'al verb. It's the simplest conjugation, but it is the form that's a participle form. It's being used here as a noun. Zera, seed, la zorea, to the sower. Seed to the person who is spreading the seed. So it's a participle. It's being used as a noun. We want to compare that to the piece in Genesis where we see the uh, same root being used. First of all, it's in the he feel, okay? So it has that initial mem, mazria zera. In other words, it's causing the seed to come up as a seed, liminehu, according to his kind. So the grass, the esev, or the, it's translated plant some places, mazria. This is a he feel, it's a participle, it's being used as a verb here. The grass is sprouting forth seed. It's, uh, we can't say it in English because zera and uh, the zera of the seed and the mazria of the verb don't have the same root in English. So we want to see uh, in the first case there is a participle that's being used in the pa'al as a noun. In the second case, it's a he feel. It's got the same root, but it's being used as a verb. Breshit Aleph Pasuk Shtayim, Genesis 1 2. Vahaaretz hayata tohu vavohu, vachoshech al pnei tohom, ruach elahim merachefet al pnei hamayim. Breshit Aleph Pasuk Shesh, Genesis 1 6. Vayomer Elohim, Yehir Akiya betochem mayim, vayehi mavdil ben mayim la mayim. In this example from Genesis, we have the verb mirachifet. And uh, so the root is rish, chepe. It's conjugated in the piel. It's a little bit stronger than the pa'al. And uh, it's conjugated... Uh, for the bird, the idea is the bird hovering over the nest waiting for the hashlings to come forth. Uh, in um, the second example about dividing the water from the water, we have this word mavdil. This is being used as a verb and it is a he feel verb, the strength of dividing. Genesis 3.8 Vayishmu'u et kol Yehovah Elohim mithalech bagan laruach hayom vayitchabe ha'adam ve'ishto mipnei Yehovah Elohim v'toch etz hagan. Mlachim bet, perek kaf bet, 
Pasuk Arba. Second Kings 22.4 Ale el Chilkiyahu hakohen hagadol, v'yatem et hakesef hamuva bet Yehova asher asvu shomrei ha'saf me'et ha'am. In the example from Genesis 3, we have um, the, uh, when, when Adam was walking in the garden uh, in the cool of the day and God was walking with him. And so we have the verb mithalech, which is in the hitpa'el. It's being used here as a verb. It's reflexive, which is so beautiful because they're walking together, uh, Adam and Elohim in the garden, but this is a verb use. In the second example on this slide, this is a verb use that's in the hofal. So it's very um, hard to see. Uh, the root actually is ba or bo, the root for come. When come appears in the he feel, in other words, the strength changes, the he feel makes it to cause to come. Well, how do we translate in English, we bring. I caused my book to come to class. No, I bring my book to class, okay? But this is the passive form, and it's talking about the money, the kesef, that is being brought to the temple. So in the sense that the these forms, these participle forms, can be used as nouns, we see that the mem becomes a prefix for nouns. And we're going to look at some more where it's actually a noun, the prefix is mem. Bereshit Aleph, Pasuk Eser. Vayikra Elohim liyabasha eretz ule mikveh hamayim kara yamim. Vayar Elohim kitov. Bereshit Aleph, Pasuk Arba Esrei. Genesis 1, 14. Vayomer Elohim, Yehim Orot Berakia Hashamayim, Lahavdil ben Hayom u ben Halayla, Vahayula Otot, Ulamo Adim, Uliamim Bishanim. In the first example in Genesis, we have mikveh. And you know what a mikveh is. It's a gathering of waters. But the root word is kaveh. Kuf, Vav, Hey. This is so interesting because what does that mean? It has the idea of measuring in it, it has the idea of gathering in it, and it also has the idea of hope in it. So you can put all those things together, but the mem there makes it a noun, mikveh. In the second example, we have two more nouns which are uh, prefixed with this mem, me'orot, which means lights. You know that the, um, the root for light is or, aleph vavresh, and also mo'adim, where we see the mem as a prefix. It comes from a root, ya'ad, yud, ayin A lot of times when you have a root that begins with yud, it disappears when we add the mem. So these are two more examples of nouns. We find them with the mem prefix. Bamidbar chet pasuk shalosh, numbers 8-3. Vayas ken aharon el mul pnei hamnora he'ela neroteha ka'asher tziva yehova et moshe. Shemot yod zayin pasuk sheva. Exodus 17.7 Vayikra Shem HaMakom Masa Umeriva Ariv B'nei Yisrael Va'al Nesotam Et Yehovah Lemor Hayesh Yehovah B'kirbenu Im Ayin Here are some more uh, common words that you know. Uh, the menorah, which is the candlestick from the uh, holy place in the tabernacle. And here are two names of some towns that are named for what happened there, Masa and Meriva. And it tells you in the, in the text, actually, that the uh, noun Meriva, the second one, comes from the Reeve, from the disagreement that they had while they were there. And also, Masa comes from the root Nasa, Nun Samech He. 
and uh, that means a trial or a testing. So again, we're seeing some letters that drop out, nun, the nun drops out, and we have masa and meriva, two nouns that are prefixed by mem. Bereshit eser pasuk shloshim b'shtayim, Genesis 10.32. Ele mishpachot b'nei noach letoldotam b'goyehem, Umeele nifurdu hagoyim ba'aretz acher hamabu. Mizmorchet pasuk echad. Psalm 8.1. Lamenatseach al hagitim. Mizmor le David. Yehova adonenu. Ma adir shemcha bachol ha'aretz asher tna hotcha al hashamayim. A few more examples. Mishpacha. Uh, is a word that I'm sure that you know. It comes from shafach, or shin pe chet, which means the um, the maid or the the helper in the house. And so the family spreads out from from her. Uh, we see one mem here, me'ele. This is the mem prefix that means from, from these, and finally the word mabul which is the flood. And this is again a verb root that begins with a yud, the yud drops off, and uh, the mem prefix makes a noun, mabul. Finally, we have two more examples of a mem prefix. Uh, I know that you know these well. Many times in the Psalms, there's a word that's translated as a chief musician, and that is minatseach. This is another example of a participle being used as a noun to the chief musician, uh, even though it is the participle form of a PL. This is a very interesting and very rich root, Netzach. It uh, has the idea of uh, continuing and continuing. So sometimes it's translated as victory, and sometimes it's translated as, um, as forever. So um, if, if you are singing this song, Victory in Yeshua, my Savior forever. You can say that. Uh, Netzach be Yeshua, Moshia la Netzach. He is my Savior forever. And it's the same word. How does this come to relate to the chief musician? Well, I guess maybe he has victory over the musicians that he's leading, or maybe the idea of playing music, where music will continue and continue and continue. And the second word is Mizmor from a root. Zemer. Um, the name of the book of Psalms is Tehillim, but when we refer to each psalm singly, we call it Mizmor, Mizmor Aleph, Psalm 1. This is also an interesting root concerning um, the idea of what happens when you worship, because the root Zemer, Zamar, means to prune. It's the same root as pruning. And so as we are able to worship, our Father in Heaven, something has to be pruned out of us. We have to forget about ourselves. We have to put things of ourselves aside so that we can truly lift up His praises. So I hope this has been helpful to you today. Uh, we have a few more uses for the letter Mem. We'll get on to those next time. In the meantime, Tassim Ta'inayim al Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.